All right. Half-life of beryllium is about 14 seconds. So what we mean, what we mean by half-life is that every 14 seconds, only half of this stuff is left. So if you measure that you currently have 24 grams in 14 seconds, you're only going to have 12 grams because only half of it's going to be left. So let's write an equation to model how much you have after t seconds. So y equals some amount we start with, our 24. Remember, it's a times b to some x power. a is always the starting value. b is always our multiplier. And we want it to be half as much. It's going to be half as much some x amount of time. But we want t seconds, and right now x is representing um, number of half-life periods. And so what we're going to say is every single time to figure out the amount of half-life periods after, say, 28 seconds, we would divide it by 14. And so our equation is going to be 24 times 1 half raised to the t divided by 14, where t is in seconds. And so that's going to be our equation. We want to know how much is left after 50 seconds. 50 seconds. So that's 24 times 1 half raised to the 50 over 14. And then after 2 minutes, so that's t equals 120 seconds. So 24 times 1 half to the 120 divided by 14. And one hour ago, so that's going to be 60 minutes for an hour times 60 seconds per minute, so that's 3600 seconds. And so that's going to be 24 times 1 half raised to the 3600 divided by 14. So we could figure out how much is left after each one of those times. I'm just going to type in times 0.5 raised to the 50 divided by 14. So remember we started with 24, now we only have 2.02, and I'm going to say this is in grams, and after 120 divided by 14. Notice that I'm putting our fraction as an exponent. I want to make sure I divide that before I raise it to the power. Now we only have 0 0.06 grams left. And now we're going to wait for a whole hour. 3600 divided by 14. 9.4 times 10 to the negative 77th. Not much left. Essentially zero. We're not going to be able to tell the difference. Um, moving on, we're going to talk about little pickup truck. So Steve decided to buy a brand new 2010 Chevy Silverado. Nice truck. 31250 bucks. he laid down for this. Now, brand new car is going to lose value right after he drives it off the lot. But let's assume that the rate of decay is 12%. So after one year, he's going to lose 12% every single year he has this car. It's probably a little bit high, but for the first year, it's probably pretty good. Um, if not more than that. So, how would we do this? Well, 12% of 31,250, we usually change this 12% into 0.12. And most people would just multiply that by the 31,250. And so you multiply 31,250 times 0.12. And that gives you 3750. Now, that is not what the car is worth. That's 12% of it, and that's how much it lost. And so then you could just subtract 31,250 minus 3,750. Oops. 3,750, and you get $27,500. Now, that's all well and good, but another way you can do it is that 
it loses 12% or it's 88% of its original value. That's 100 minus the 12 and you take care of the subtraction to begin with. So, or you could do it by multiplying by 0 0.88 times your 31,250. And you get the same exact thing. 0 0.88 times 31,250, you get 27,500. The reason I do it this way is because there's one less step involved. Technically, we subtracted um, the 88% from 100%, or sorry, the 12% from 100%. But the reason we do it is because if you want to repeat it for eight years, so after one year, two years, three years, we're going to continue to multiply by 0.88. So rather than multiplying by 0.88 a ton of times, right, we could just take our 31,250 and multiply it by 0.88 eight times. So raise it to the eighth power. So 31,250 times 0.88 raised to the eighth power is what we have. And we've got a truck worth $11,238.58. Why not? We'll round up and give him a better value. So you'll find that this continues to be the same thing every single time. So what we used is this is our A times our B raised to the X power. B is our constant multiplier. That's replaced by 1 plus the interest rate or 1 minus the interest rate. It's going to be plus the interest rate if it's growing, but we used 1 minus the interest rate, 1 minus 0.2. Um, and so this is the interest rate. percent as a decimal. Make sure you re recognize that. And this is called the principal. We use that. Or that's your starting value, just like your A. And so don't think of it as another equation to memorize. Because you, you realize that you understood the subtracting from the point. The subtracting the 12 percent from the 100. So 1 minus 0.12 you understood that your principal value was what we were going to be multiplying by. And so try to make sense of this equation rather than memorizing it.